best impressions of the Royal Accord Model 3. Really, really happy. I've been doing film photography for, I think it's maybe 10 years. I lose track. And I've got a lot of nice cameras, Leicas, Hasselblads, things like this. I managed to resist until this time to buying any TLR cameras. And then one of the guys I speak to online about Leicas, he's like, oh, he's, a, he's a, into his roller cords and roller flexes. He's like, oh, you really need to try a TLR or kind of words to that effect. So I'm like, okay, I'll try one. Um, so I looked on eBay and um, found what seemed to be quite a good bargain, something almost too good to, to say no to. And in terms of Leica prices, roller cords are reasonably affordable. They're kind of a similar price to a Leica 3A, which is a very affordable Leica uh, film camera. But you get a lot more camera for you kind of for your money with uh, a roller flex. I bought this camera during the time where we're, we're, we're in lockdown in England and Leica cameras are not designed for staying in your house kind of photography. They're rangefinder cameras so they don't focus close. Now what interested me particularly with the roller cord is because the one I found came with close focus lenses. This means I can do the similar to say a Hasblad but it's a much smaller setup so it's a bit more portable and fun to work with and after having this camera for a few days the thing that's impressed me the most is the the viewing screen. I don't know if you can see that. Now I've got various other, this is called a waist level viewfinder and then there's a magnifier on the top you push this like that and then you're focusing it looking down like so. What impressed me the most about the roller cord is how clear the focusing screen is. I've got Hasselblads and I use the Acumat D viewing screens which is supposed to be one of some of the best ones to try to make it easier to focus because the Hasselblad is really difficult to focus I think personally. The Mia RZ was probably my best waist level viewfinder camera in terms of easy focusing until I got this. Um, the roller cord is even more easy. Images just seem to like click into focus and out of focus so rather than being like just smooth all the time they just kind of pop into focus when you're viewing giving me confidence that something's in fo focus and I can then take the, the picture. With all my other waist level viewfinder cameras as well I've always had to shoot it at eye level. And this is the first camera I've tried where I can critically focus with the magnifier and then move the magnifier out of the way to see the whole clear composition to then take the shot lower down. That's very enjoyable to use as like a, a user. The macro adapters that came with the camera means I can do close-up photography and standard photography. It came with a hood. It's got the 35mm film adapter, meaning you can shoot 35mm film with it. You can get an adapter so you can shoot 645 format film with the same camera. You can get prisms to go on the top. So it's an eye level one. This has got a sports finder. So what you do is you push this down and then you pre-focus first at your subject. Then push that down which blocks the view and you're just composing like I would a rangefinder, like this. So that means you can shoot it at high level. So it's another kind of cool feature. Come in a nice case, but I probably don't. I'll probably use it without the case a lot of the time, just because that's how I use my cameras. Just to recap it, if you don't already know, Rolly cords and Rolly flexes, they're TLR cameras, which means basically TLR, twin reflex camera. Yeah, it's different to a normal most cameras because you have two lenses on the front one is a viewing lens one is a taking lens the top lens you look through here across a mirror and then up so the image you get is the correct orientation meaning if, if I look at myself the top of my head is here the only difference is it's left to right is backwards so if I want to go that way I'm going to, I'm going to go that way so it takes a bit of time to get used to it compared to a prism where what you see is what you get, you turn left, the camera goes left or the view goes left with a TLR 
the view is the opposite. Top lens is a viewing lens, bottom lens is your taking lens. In terms of controls, it's super simple. You've got the focusing knob on the bottom. You can see the, the lens is extending. Like so. You've got your film advance on the top. It won't work because there's no film in it. To cock the shutter, it looks more like a large format camera where all the controls are on the, the front of the lens itself. So on the looking at the camera, the way you're looking, if I look down on the right hand side, I've got my app, my shutter speed, which goes from ball mode, which means if you hold the shutter down, it goes as long as you want, up to one over 250, which is quite slow, but it's not the sort of camera where you would need super fast shutter speeds. So shutter speeds on by moving this dial and then you've got aperture by moving this dial now my particular lens is a Zenar I thought it was a Zenitar but it's actually a Zenar um, Snyder lens um, Snyder lenses are pretty well known to be good lenses um, it's a 75mm f3.5 now most roller cords and roller flexes the co most common aperture is f3.5 and then the kind of the most desirable of the f2.8 roller flexes. I wanted to get a roller cord because the this is like a baby brother to the roller flex and it's a simpler setup with no light meter, lighter, lighter weight, smaller body. The main difference <coughs> in really simple terms on a rolly flex you've got a um, film advance crank on the this side of the camera instead of the film advance knob that's the main difference there's probably many more but that's the main kind of visual difference i wanted it small and light as possible you can see it's kind of similar size to my well smaller than my head maybe i've probably got a fat head it's quite a small camera so shutter speeds on the bottom lens right taking lens aperture on the taking lens left and then on the bottom of the lens you've got another lever uh, this is your to cock the shutter so you push across from left to right like this to cock the shutter and to take the picture you're pulling back from right to left like that because it's a leaf shutter lens rather than a shutter in the camera body you can hand hold the camera at quite slow shutter speeds 1 over 25 even slower than I use my Leicas. I do. I can use my Leicas that slow, but I tend to use one over sixty for models mostly. But for kind of static subjects, I've been using this at one over twenty-five, partly because it's an f three point five lens, meaning I need more light. You can screw in a cable release here, PC sync port for flash photography, because it's a leaf shutter lens. The camera will sync at any shutter speed so 1 to 1 over 250th that doesn't sound that impressive because some digital cameras will shoot at up to 1 over 250 I think my like my Nikon F5 does but compared to a like a film camera which only sync at 1 over 50 1 over 250 is so much better so I'm excited to try some flash photography with this when I get to sh work with some models again that's pretty much all the details on the camera um film counters here so you get because it's um six by six film you get 12 photos per roll of film in terms of film loading i'll do that in another video because um i don't have a roll of film in my hand at the moment if you've never tried a tlr camera and say you're struggling at the moment and feeling uninspired i think for the value even if you want something really pretty just to go on your shelf on your mantelpiece in your house and never actually use it this is one of the few cameras where i would be happy to take photos of the camera as much as use the camera so when i was shooting my test roll i was just as happy doing selfies through a mirror of the camera itself than actually taking proper pictures There can't be many cameras where you can kind of say this. It 
extremely happy and I can't believe I didn't try a TLR years sooner. So yes, this is my roller cord and yes, my new favourite camera at the moment. Um, it doesn't fit into your pocket like it like a like a 3A or something tiny. So I think my ultimate setup in terms of in fact I have two cameras, one for the most fun and for close up and one for super portable for say running or cycling, something like this. I think I'd use the roller flex roller cord. I'd use the roller cord for the most fun because it lets me do close up and like a cameras don't and range finder cameras don't. And it's a joy to use using the waist level viewfinder. This would be my first choice at the moment and then my second choice would be something portable so if I wanted 35mm film it would be a like a 3A with a 5cm f3.5 LMR collapsible lens on and if I wanted a portable medium format camera I would take probably the smallest I've got is a Voigtlander Perkier 1 but if I wanted it with a working rangefinder viewfinder I'd probably take at the moment my uh, Agfa Isolate clone, which is a Iskra, I-S-K-R-A. So I hope you found that useful and yeah, very happy to play, very excited to start playing with this camera a bit more. Roll record Mark 3. Let me show you what I bought when I got my roll record. This is the... Um, or the, the case, camera case and what did we get inside right this is the the cap which goes on the front of the camera I'll show you this in a second there's manuals in here as well but I won't go into I can show you quickly That is the paperwork I've got, and then inside the actual box, I have various bits. Firstly, the the camera itself, which I'll show you in more detail after this kind of unboxing, just to show you quickly. And then this cap fits on like so. The lens protector. So, firstly, the camera, and then next, these are the bits I was probably most excited about. Well, these are close focus adapter rings, they come in two parts. The top one, the bigger one, goes onto the top lens, so your viewing lens. The bottom one goes onto your taking lens, so they'd be kind of like this on the camera. I guess I can show you in a second. They're called Rollinar. So there's a Rollinar 1 and a Rollinar 2. Um, they're different magnifications, uh, letting you focus closer, the camera lens closer than you could normally. So Rollinar 1 and Rollinar 2. The next thing in the bag a HANA light meter. Now normally I use iconic light meters but this is a nice manual light meter to have as a backup. We're going to too much detail because it doesn't relate to the camera but a nice addition. Um, you have the lens hood. So there's roller kit on it and it goes onto the taking lens because that's the lens which is capturing your image so you want to protect the taking lens from the sun more than the viewing lens. Um, what else have we got? I've got a roly UV filter. 
Not sure if I'll use that, but I have it if I need to. I have I don't know how you pronounce that Frankie and Hindeck. So that's the manufacturers of the lens itself. I'll show you in a second. And here is a branded rolly kind of yellow green filter. Um, so this would be useful for potentially portraits, um, foliage photos, or on a blue sky day if you want to make the blue sky darker in the image. So I'll definitely be using this. That's a good good thing to have for me. All right, what is this? Auto kips. Look at this. Now this is a timer. This is a self-release timer. So you screw this into where you would screw a cable release. So here is a standard cable release. So you want to do um, photos on a tripod, you'd use this for slow shutter speeds. Now instead of using a cable release, you can use a self timer device like this auto knips, I think you'd say. Um, you'd screw this in the same as you would screw in the the cable release. So yeah, I've never seen one of those before. And uh, thank to my friend for identifying for me what this is because I was going to Google it. I wasn't really sure. And he's like, "Oh, it's a self timer." So helpful to know people that know more than you. <laughs> so self release timer, self release timer. And lastly, Rollerkin two. Comes in a very nice box. Now here is a 35mm rolly cord adapter kit. If you put this adapter into your roller cord, you can shoot 35mm film. So you have a, a mask for the viewfinder, as I understand it mask for the camera itself and then the adapters to let you um, load 35mm film so I will try this at some point beautiful case so that's the content of the, the bag now I'll quickly show you how to use a close-up adapter so if I open up the oops Open up the roller cord, let's say, and then if we take out one of the close up lenses, now the bigger lens goes onto the top, onto your viewing lens, and there's a red dot. The red dot needs to be on the top of the camera. So when you fit it, I'll show you in a second. The red dot needs to be here, see? So bigger lens, when you're using close-up filters, the bigger, the deeper the lens goes on the top, the less deep lens goes onto the bottom. Again, there's a red dot on the one I have. Red dot, red dot goes on the top. I don't think it matters so much with the bottom lens, with the top lens. You've got some glass on an angle so you need it to be the right way around because what happens is you're looking through the camera you look through here there is a, a mirror here you look at the image on the mirror and out the um, view lens, the top lens the problem you've got is if you're photographing something much closer if you can imagine you're focusing here but the photo is going to be taken here because it's a lower angle. So by having this glass on an angle, it, the point of view of the 
view a lens in an angle similar to the view of the taking lens. So it's basically making your view go down here, hit the mirror, forward, but then down at an angle like this. So when you're taking a photo of say something like this, show it better. If I'm photographing this, then the angle is going down. On the this is a Roland R2. You can see the number two here. Hopefully, Roland R2 will have a different angle of glass than a Roland R1. So one will let you focus say here to here. One will let you focus say here to here. Just as an example. Um, so that's how you f use the close focus adapters. If you have a lens hood, the lens hood will clip over the viewfinder, over the close-up lens as well. Like so. Like so. So I would look through here, take through here. I can quickly try and take the camera out of the case for you. You lift up the pin on the top here and then just carefully peel it around the camera pin here lift up and then again carefully take the camera out okay This is the camera out of the case. On the bottom of the roller cord you have a tripod socket. To open the camera, press this across this lever, follow the arrow, lift this up and push. And there we are. There is inside a roller cord. Now you put your new film in here by lifting this out. You then move your film across and put your empty spool into this end. So this end is the top of the camera. So the new film, bottom of the camera, empty spool, top of the camera. You again lift, pull out this to let you put in your empty cartridge, empty film spool. And then you have red dots here. You then, once the, the new film is in, you basically turn the film advance knob like so until the start arrow lines up here. Once it's lined up, you obviously your film's in. Close the back, push that down, close that. You advance the film with the film advance lever, or if you've got a roll of flex, you turn the crank. Advance the film until there's a number one in the window. Thanks for watching.